Andrew McCart, IFL TV in association with MTK Global. I'm here in Frisco, Texas. With me, I've got David Higgins, promoter of uh, Joseph Parker. Huge fight for Joseph on Saturday night against Chantel uh, Winters. He's just come back from a horrific injury. First of all, how's Joseph feeling ahead of this fight? Joseph is in great shape mentally and physically. He's um, put on a bit of weight and muscle, perhaps more power, and he's relaxed, cool as a cucumber, so he's in good condition for the fight. Winters isn't no mug. I was speaking to his management team yesterday at the hotel, and he was like, he's got nothing to lose. He's going to go in here and he's going to put it on Joseph. Are you expecting the best Chantel Winters on Saturday night? Yeah, look, um, a, a boxer of that experience is always dangerous. And if you look at his knockout percentage, Sean Dell is, you know, 90-something percent knockouts. Um, and like you say, he has nothing to lose. So it's dangerous and we can't take victory for granted. Um, but if Joseph fights it, as we know he can, at his best, then there should be no problem. How is that, that spider bite injury? Is it all healed? Like, I, I've, not, I've not seen or heard anything else from it. Is it all good to go? Believe it or not, it was a spider bite. And Joseph had a wound on his leg that looked like a spider bite, which grew from there. And he, he bought a new property, and there were a lot of spiders on the property. And, and he was genuinely sick via a spider bite. He's 100% now, and he confirmed that he's having his house water blasted every fortnight to get rid of any potential future spider attacks future spider attacks I'm never going to Joseph house, Joseph's house if that's the case all going well for Joseph on Saturday night are you hoping to get an, a bigger fight maybe revisit the Chisora fight if, if win or lose against Yusek or rematch against White what are you hoping for this year for Joseph well Joseph Parker has proven he'll fight anyone I mean people say that but Joseph's proven it never shied away he's been calling out Dillian White ever since White got that lucky win with the headbutt He's, he'd happily rematch Joshua. Um, he's been calling out Chisora, and Chisora's now gone the other way. Uh, Joseph would fight Usyk, Pavetkin, you name it. Joseph Parker would genuinely fight anyone. But his goal and focus this weekend is to beat Shondell Winters, and then, you know, he'll take any good um, opportunity that comes his way. I spoke to Kevin Barry out in Vegas. He seems, he wants another crack at White, he said. He said, once this Saturday's over, he wants to, another shot at Dillian White. The way things have panned out, it looks like Joshua's fixing his mandatories with Pulev. Chisora's got Usyk. Uh, White looks like he's got Povetkin. All going well, Povetkin or White. Is that the sort of fight you want? Maybe the winner of that fight? Yeah, sure thing. I mean, those any of those four is the sort of level that we want to be at at the moment. And then always being ready for call-up if an even bigger opportunity comes along. You never know in boxing with wins and losses, ranking changes injuries look i mean look at ruiz got the call up against joshua and joseph is a household name in the uk he's building his profile in america and he's seen as a credible opponent so he could get the call up one day um so we're always ready he's a former world champion he's been in a unified yeah, unified fight with joshua you mentioned he's been in more white uh, he's up there, isn't he? He's in that sort of bracket where it's world-level opponents. When you talk about Dillian White, you talk about uh, U6, you talk about Povetkins, Joseph is up there amongst them names. When can we see Joseph fight for another world title? Is it, he's got to get winners out of the way first, but can you hope for one this year? Oh, I would hope so. Look, and again, Joseph's still never been stopped. Um, so he's just got to keep at that level, fighting guys like Usyk, uh, Chisora, White, and winning ideally. And then I'd say um, then he'd probably fight for another title, hopefully within 18 months or so. He's currently WBO world number two, so he's very well positioned. He's got the profile. He's a proven pay-per-view draw card with Joshua and the white fight. And so he's going to work on pay-per-view that the fans like and respect him. And so um, we just got to keep winning and, and I'm sure it will come soon. I spoke to Joseph in Vegas. There's a reason why he's in Vegas. He trains out there, but he was also at a huge heavy fight last Saturday. Wilder versus Fury. Quickly, David, what was your thoughts on the whole fight? Oh, look, it was amazing to watch um, Tyson Fury produce a boxing masterclass. It's one thing to talk about your fight plan in advance, but Tyson delivered on his plan. He changed his style, he appeared heavier, and he absolutely bullied Dante Wilder. It looked like a, a heavyweight versus a, a light heavyweight, um, throwing him around the ring, using his weight, um, you know, it was amazing, dropped him with a body shot. Um, so, you know, our team are close friends with the Fury team and we were delighted to see Tyson 
um, win in such formidable, dominant fashion. And he's a legend. Like, the, and then sing the song afterwards and the one-liners he comes up with. He's the most larger-than-life character I've ever met in my life, and I've met some fascinating creatures in my time. You're quite a larger-than-life character. Would you ever be in the ring and sing after going seven rounds with a world champion, winning a world title, and then do a rendition in front of 17,000 fans? Would you ever do that, David? Look, I can't fight and I can't sing. <laughs> Can we ask what you do? Oh, I'm good at drinking. <laughs> That's what I want. I want to see dr drunk David in this yeah, when, I'm, when I'm in Texas. I'm sure I will. No, I'm reasonably good at making the, the business deals and promoting. Um, you know, I like a laugh and a drink. But no, I've never been a fighter and I wish I could sing. Well, there you go. Just going to touch going back to Tyson Fury and Wilder. I mean, Tyson said that he was going to stop Wilder. Nobody believed him. He came in and he said he was going to come in at 270. Now, everybody was saying, Tyson, that's too heavy. That's too heavy. It seems to prove everyone wrong time and time again, doesn't he? Yeah, look, I think that fight that he looked a bit average, he'd maybe overtrained or taken too much weight off. You've got to be in your natural body. And, um, you know, <clears throat> Dante Wilder's got su such skinny legs. He's he's exceptionally light for a heavyweight and enable Tyson who's bigger to just lean on him and overcome him with weight and, and um, power and size and so I think it was a very smart strategy by Tyson not to get obsessed with trimming too much and just come in and do what do the business the way he did. Fury Joshua next Is, are you excited about that fight do you want to see that fight? Yep, everyone wants to see it. No one wants to see Fury Wilder 3. And if Wilder forces that, he's being selfish T to John Tay Wilder. No one wants to see a third fight now between you and Fury. Don't be selfish. Let the world see Fury versus Joshua. And they're talking about paying you step aside money. If the likes of Saudi Arabia chucked a few hundred million down, it could be your biggest ever payday for not even fighting. So there's no excuses there. And then perhaps Jonte could fight the winner. The smart thing to do would be a three-way deal where Fury and uh, Joshua happens next and then Wilder gets a shot back later. That way he gets paid step-aside money and then he gets the third fight eventually. What do you make of his excuses post-fight with the costume being over 40 pounds and that Fury didn't hurt him without the fight? It was such a stupid, ignorant excuse. At first I thought he was joking, but then to my horror it appears he was actually serious that he was using his stupid costume as an excuse. It's just plainly ridiculous. I mean, I think it weighed 40-odd pounds, which, you know, if, if that's a problem, he shouldn't be dressing like a clown on the way into the ring. You said it. Um, final word on Joseph Parker. He looks fit, he looks ready. What can we expect on Saturday night from... Oh, look, um, Joseph's cool as a cucumber. He's growing up. He's still the youngest of the top echelon of heavyweights. He's only 28 years old, not in his prime yet. We just want Joseph to show what we know he can do. He's knocked a lot of people out, and what I'd like to see is Joseph dominate and, and win by stoppage like Fury did last weekend. David, thanks for this fight, Phil TV, and I'm pretty sure that I'll see you throughout fight week, so yeah. let's enjoy it. We'll grab a beer at some point. I'm a Scotsman, that's what I love. Thank you, David.